much, uh, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, for this uh, interesting hearing, and thank you to the witnesses for your expertise. I am going to ask two questions together because of the interest of time, hoping that each witness can respond to each. We have also had discussions in this committee about near-Earth objects and the potential for asteroid incidents. And in those hearings, we talked a lot about international collaboration, because obviously this is not just an issue that affects our country. So will you each discuss briefly the nature of international collaboration in the exoplanet research? And then the second question has to do with uh, a, a more of a big picture issue. As members of this committee, we are privileged to be frequently presented with this extensive information on these issues and hear from people with expertise. And then when we are back in our districts, we often find that the public at large lacks specific information about the work that NASA is doing and, importantly, how it affects them. So with that in mind, could you also address uh, how you publicize what you are doing, how you educate the public about not only the discovery of exoplanets, but how to best translate that into the benefits to the public at large? Thank you. And I will ask each of you to respond to those two issues. I will go ahead and start. Uh, almost everything we do in, in NASA is, has large international collaboration. The International Space Station, the James Webb Space Telescope, these are uh, partnerships where there is integral collaboration between European Space Agency, Canadian Space Agency, the United States, in the case of the Space Station, Russia and, and uh, Japan. Uh, and the, these are working great. I would say probably 90 percent of everything in the science mission directorate is an international collaboration at some level, where we are contributing to a leadership of a European instrument or uh, another country is contributing to a leadership in one of our programs. James Webb Pro Space Telescope is an example where the U.S. is, is leading. Uh, even on the Hubble Space Telescope, originally that it was a 15 percent share of the European Space Agency. Um, but when we actually go to use the telescope, it is very broad. And, uh, all, of course, all of our data is public. And so anyone can actually use it, and so that, that's much further. When we discover things, uh, we put them out as press releases, we put them on websites, but more importantly, we have an education and public outreach program where the scientists work with master teachers, and that gets into the curriculum materials, into the textbooks, uh, and into pre-service and in-service teachers who then work with millions of students. Uh, that's how we work through the educational side. Through more informal education, we reach out to libraries across the country, planetariums and museums. We do exhibits and shows, and all of that contributes to the public knowledge of, of the science benefits uh, from NASA. Thank you. Dr. Doyle? Uh, on the Kepler team, I would say uh, we have a huge number of uh, countries represented. There is the Astrobiology Consortium, which is uh, centered in Denmark. But there are 500 members of that, and that's just a spin-off from the main Kepler science team. So I would say Kepler is automatically international. Um, with regard to reaching out and educational uh, activities, um, one of the things that we're doing is uh, basically starting a series of uh, kind of a wiki university uh, where people can learn about life in the universe from the SETI Institute and take classes and so on. And uh, I don't see any reason why they couldn't pass the SAT after taking our classes. <laughs> so it's free and online, and let's go for it. Thank you. Dr. Oldestad? Yeah, first on the international front, uh, like NASA, most of our major activities now are international in terms of building big telescopes and operating big telescopes. But I will honestly say that there is also some competition there. In the use of those telescopes, we would like the scientists from the United States to actually be leading in the discoveries. So they may be in collaborations, in fact, often are with other international scientists, but we do want to make sure that the U.S. scientists have the opportunities to use the tools we've, we've built. Now, you mentioned near-Earth objects, so I'll just pick up on that for a second. Uh, the number one ranking in the National Academy Decadal Survey for a ground-based instrument was actually something called the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. And one of its science goals is to characterize the asteroid population in our own solar system and can do that very extensively, including near-Earth asteroids. That happens to be not an international partnership, but a partnership with the Department of Energy. So you may consider them international uh, relative to NSF and NASA. They have slightly different cultures than we have, but that's a, a different sort of incredibly valuable partnership. 
with respect to the public information, one of the requirements we have at NSF for everybody who applies for a research grant and for our large facility managers is something called broader impacts. And they're required to tell us what they're doing, will do in their grant for broader impacts to the public. So in getting ready for this hearing, I was actually looking at the research grants that we've been making on exoplanets over the last several years. And a large fraction of those people, their broader impacts involved going into high schools. It ranged between K to 12, but high schools seemed to be a particular point that they were interested in. And that, if I can pick up on a previous question, is very important My time because. Is expired. I'm okay. sorry. My time has expired. I, I